Hi, I'm Alex Molyneux, CEO of Galena Mining. Galena is listed on the ASX under the ticker G1A, and we are one of Australia's most exciting base metals development projects at this time. Galena came to market in September 2017 as a new IPO. Our flagship asset was the Abra Base Metals Deposit, which had been discovered in the 1980s and under previous owners had been considered to be a very large deposit for lead, silver and other base metals, uh, but somewhat low grade. Uh, our contention when we brought it to IPO was that within this lower grade um, halo, if you like, could be one or two contiguous higher grade loads. And if that contention could be proven correct, there could be a very interesting and high return mine plan that could be put around that. So the company post IPO immediately commenced uh, drilling. The drilling results were excellent. Very high grade thick intercepts of lead and silver. That then led into a modern maiden resource. Additional funding was raised and the company moved very quickly from the exploration phase into the pre-development phase. In September of 2019, an outstanding pre-feasibility study was uh, released, which conceptualized uh, a long-term mine plan for lead and zinc, uh, for lead and silver production at, um, at Abra with a uh, outstanding economic return and a fairly low capital investment. That process, uh, that, that PFS uh, instigated the interest of a number of strategic parties in the industry. And in early 2019, we announced an agreement with Toho Zinc of Japan, which is Japan's largest zinc and lead smelter, for Toho's proposed investment of 90 million Australian dollars for a 40% stake in AMPL, which is our, our holding company that owns the Abra Base Metals Deposit. With that investment agreement concluded, we moved on and we completed uh, also an outstanding definitive feasibility study in uh, mid-2019. We also completed all of the major permits around the same time for the Abra Base Metals Deposit in late 2019, we commenced some early project works on the site, um, such as site clearing, preparing uh, our, our site camp and uh, installing uh, production water systems and wastewater treatment. Uh, we also concluded an offtake with, with IXM, one of the world's three largest base metals traders, to purchase the 60% of Abra's future production, which was not already committed to Toho under the Toho uh, agreement. In August of this year, we have announced an agreement with Taurus Funds Management for the provision of 110 million US dollars of project development facilities. With that, we're well on our way to move into the construction phase at Abra Base Metals Project. Today, the company has approximately 462 million shares on issue for a market cap of about 115 million Australian dollars. And we have a cash balance of around 22 million Australian dollars. Our board includes some very experienced project development and uh, base metals management employees. I'd like to highlight, for example, Tony James. Tony James is, uh, uh, has been a, uh, a managing director of three base metals and gold companies, uh, mid cap companies in the ASX previously. He's a mining engineer of 30 years experience and has been involved in the development of and redevelopment of very significant assets in the industry, such as the Higginsfield gold mine. Stuart Howe is uh, a former chief commercial officer of one of the world's largest lead producers Zinefex and brings to us a lot of experience with respect to concentrate marketing and the structure of the lead industry. Abra is located in the Gascoigne region of Western Australia. It's approximately 
Uh, 110 kilometres as the crow flies northwest of Sandfire's very successful De Grasse base metals mine. Abra sits on a granted mining lease and it's well served by existing Shire roads. Abra will be is connected by road to Geraldton Port, one of WA's Midwest ports, which is our proposed export terminal for our lead concentrate shipments. The Abra mineralisation model has been debated over time. It's not a SEDEX deposit. It's a deposit where hydrothermal fluids entered into a sedimentary basin and at, the, at, at some point reached um, a very competent layers of sediments and, uh, and then the, the mineraliz mineralisation stopped rising and spread laterally within certain, certain lithological uh, layers of the sedimentary basin. And it presents itself as a fairly contiguous, somewhat disseminated lead mineralization within those uh, lithological units. This is what Abra's mineralization looks like. On the left, is a is massive galena uh what you're looking at is 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 pure galena in, in 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 that core photo right there that's generally how the mineralization presents itself in the core zone the zone of the hydrothermal fluids which fed that uh, upper zone which we refer to as the apron zone the photo on the right shows the mineralization in the apron zone in its typical form you can see it's taken the matrix of uh, the sedimentary units, but you can also see that deep, uh, somewhat shiny uh, grey layer of material, which is how the lead is presenting itself in, in, in those units. Our mineral resource is 41.1 million tonnes at 7.3% lead and 18 grams a tonne silver. The resource is based on 76 thousand cumulative linear meters of drilling at Abra. A 55% of those holes uh, or, or those meters are new and meters we have drilled since the IPO of Galena in 2017. So uh, whilst Abra has been around for a number of decades, we can say that um, in terms of knowledge of, of the deposit and its geology, uh, it's 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 been completely overhauled in in the last few years with a significant amount of work. We're currently in the midst of an additional uh, drilling program at the moment, um, which uh, is in excess of fifteen thousand cumulative linear meters. This is how uh, the re resource appears in a three dimensional image. You you can see the red is the high grade um, core zone, we call it the, the, the hydrothermal feeder zone. But the main source of the mine plan is in this golden, uh, these blankets of contiguous mineralization uh, uh, laying, lying on top with a, a, a much shallower dip. In terms of reserve, uh, we completed a reserve alongside our definitive feasibility study in 2019. The reserve is based on uh, the December 2018 resource, i.e. a resource that was available prior to the current resource because uh, we were drilling throughout the period that we completed the DFS and uh, we obviously were continuing to drill. So the, the reserve was 10.3 million tonnes at 8.8% lead and 24 grams a tonne uh, silver. The mine plan itself presented in the feasibility study incorporated 16.3 million tonnes of material uh, in a 1.2 million tonne a year mine plan for 16 years of mine life. The DFS head grade is 8.1% lead and 20.2 grams per tonne silver. This is what our feasibility study mine plan looks like in terms of an image. Uh, the orange 
uh, lines, if you like, are our capital mine development, our box cut, our uh, mine decline, and uh, you know horizontal, horizontal and vertical uh, development meters. Those uh, the pink shaded uh, uh, blocks are our proposed um, uh, a lot long hole open stopes, and also in certain flat lying areas, a little bit of uh, room and pillar mining. Metallurgy is one of our project's key strengths. The metal, the, 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 whilst, whilst Abra is a polymetallic uh, deposit, as, as similar sulphide-based metals deposits are, it's very zonal. So in the, in, the, in the upper part of the deposit, the sulphide mineral that is dominant is galena, and there is some lead uh, con uh, let's say um, coincident with the so there's there's some silver coincident with the lead mineralization. So um, we have a very pure in 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 the lead silver resource. Uh, we don't have a lot of competing minerals for recovery. So our metallurgical testing showed that conventional sulfide flotation re resulted in very high grade recoveries, uh, very high recovery numbers, so 93 to 95% uh, recoveries. Our DFS uses 94%. And the material, the ore recovers through that process into a very, very high grade product, 75% lead grade lead concentrate. That would be the highest grade lead concentrate commercially available in the world. Now, lead, like other materials, lead concentrates are becoming in the, the environmental regulations governing these materials are increasing. The cost of disposal of penalty elements in lead concentrates, which are things like arsenic, mercury and cadmium, is increasing dramatically. China is introducing and tightening new limits on the import of those uh, deleterious elements. As a result, the value of a clean concentrate is very high. Galena's concentrate will effectively be the cleanest commercial concentrate globally. That 75% lead grade is very high, but it also has next to zero with respect to those deleterious elements that create penalties in the market. This is one of the reasons why Toho was attracted to our project and why we were able to also bring in IXM to um i'll take the the non toho material our proposed flow sheet is very simple there's there's no untested technology in this in this flow sheet it's simply uh crushing up front followed by a very conventional uh flotation uh thickening filtration uh drying into a uh high grade lead and silver concentrate the fs metrics feasibility study metrics as i said previously are outstanding we used spot prices of the day to forecast our economic assumptions when we published the study in july of 2018 so we used a lead price of 92 cents per pound a silver price of 16 dollars an ounce an exchange rate of uh, us dollars 70 cents for for every a dollar and those spot assumptions carried flat forward through the model resulted in a post-tax NPV of 381 million and a post-tax internal rate of return of 32%. Pre-tax, those numbers are 553 million Australian dollars and 39%. Now, the feasibility study also assesses the project as being the lowest cost primary cash cost primary lead project in the world according to wood mckenzie the feasibility study is based on a pre-production capital estimate of 170 million australian dollars here's what abra's site is proposed to look like the site involves um, an underground mining facility, main mining method, as we said previously, long hole open stoping, a conventional 
sulfide flotation processing facility on surface, tailing storage facility, site accommodation for approximately 280 personnel and an upgraded airstrip. We've already prepared site quite significantly. We've mined a box cut, which you can see in the photo on the bottom left hand page. We have also commenced construction of the permanent camp. We have 80 units already installed and we have another 200 units that have been fabricated and delivered to site ready for installation. Production water bores are in place, water reticulation, wastewater treatment facilities have been conditioned. We have purchased a secondhand pace fill plant, which comes from Higginsville Gold Mine. And we have also installed site communication at, 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 uh, in place and, and that switched on. So site now has 200 megabits per second internet. Those works that have been complete represent 12% of the total project. In addition, we've also awarded GR Engineering a $74 million EPC contract under a guaranteed maximum price arrangement to build the plant and certain ancillary infrastructure. We've also awarded our uh, underground mining contract to a tier one miner and have selected preferred tenders for uh, power and non-plant infrastructure. So in terms of funding, this is a key question that often comes up. Here we have a sources and uses table. On the left hand side, we show our uses. $170 million capex, which is the DFS capital expenditure estimate. Owners costs, ramp up, working capital, cost overrun contingencies. We're estimating an additional $38 million. Financing costs, $7 million. That means we expect the project to cost $215 million Australian dollars to completion. Now, what funding do we have in place? Well, firstly, we've already, as we said previously, uh, we've already completed $20 million of the expenditure. We currently have $22 million cash in the bank. We are due to receive the last tranches of the total of $90 million investment by Toho. So Toho has already uh, contributed $30 million to ABRA and they have a remaining $60 million to contribute, which comes in alongside the project debt milestones. Then we've announced the $110 million of Taurus project debt facilities, uh, which uh, in Australian dollar terms are about 151 million. So with that, we have 253 million Australian dollars of funding available to us. That would create a buffer, if you like, uh, compared to our proposed expenditure plan of about $38 million. Now, the key here is the status of the Taurus debt. The Taurus debt, uh, we've uh, entered into an agreement with them and we've publicly announced it. We're going through the detailed document phase, documentation phase and we're doing some, uh, they're doing some confirmatory due diligence. So uh, we expect to move relatively quickly to financial close on the Taurus facility, which is when we execute that facility agreement. Once we reach financial close, Taurus immediately makes 30 million US dollars of their facility available to us. However, the remaining $70 million of the main project development facility is conditional on the completion of the current infill drilling program that we're conducting right now. Taurus effectively wants Galena to be at 30 by 30 meter spacing or better for the first four years of the currently proposed mine plan. So we're working on that program now. And the idea here is that fi financial close will occur once we execute the facility agreement. We'll still be drilling at that point. Then once the drilling information is available, um, we'll determine the completion of the, the condition on making the remaining 70 million US dollars available. With the full facility available to us, as you can see, we believe we're relatively comfortably funded 
through the ramp up, the construction and the ramp up phase of ABRA. So what's coming up for us in terms of milestones? Firstly, it's very important for us to conclude the project financing facility and also meet the conditions for that facility. Concluding that facility and meeting such conditions triggers the final $60 million Australian to be received from TOO under their investment agreement. It then triggers the move by us into a financial investment decision and to, to enact the procurement and construction phase of the EPC contract and commence the underground mining operation. At the moment, we are partly through this infill and optimization drilling uh, program. We've not yet received any assays, uh, but we will be receiving assays over the next few months, and those will be very significant news flow items for us. Every time we've infilled Abra here uh, over the last two and a half years, we have added metal through those programs. So we're very optimistic that we'll get similar results with our current proposed program. We're also working on some optimization initiatives. Uh, one is to try to reduce the pre-development capital with the redesign of the primary decline. Uh, but also some of the information we get from this drilling program is going to help us optimize the early years of the mine plan. And we believe there's some significant savings to be introduced into our model that way. Uh, once we get the financing closed and we move into construction, there will be obvious construction and commissioning milestones. We also have a significant exploration presence in our home, which is the Edmund Basin. Our exploration includes a few things. Number one, there is a copper gold zone immediately beneath and offset to the south of the existing Abra lead silver resource. Some of the historical drill results that we've had in that zone would be the envy of any copper or gold producer. For example, 13 metres at 6.3 grams a tonne gold or 8 metres at 2.8 grams a tonne gold with 1.5% copper, 12 metres at 3 gram a tonne gold with 1.1% copper. There's potential for a significant copper and gold ore body to complement our existing lead and silver mine. We've done a lot of work recently on where the core of the copper and zo gold zone might be. And that work includes downhole electromagnetic work and reinterpretation of historical drilling results. As a result, we believe that the, the core of the copper gold zone is associated with a strong EM conductor plate running across the south of our deposit. We intend to drill that as part of our ongoing infield drilling program right now. Some of those holes will be uh, designed to intersect this uh, very exciting target. Beyond Abra, we own 76 kilometres of contiguous strike in the Edmund Basin uh, out to the west of Abra. Now, the Edmund Basin is a sedimentary basin wedged between two very well-known geologies, the Nilgarn Craton to the south and the Pilbara Craton to the north. Edmund Basin is relatively small and not that well covered from a geological perspective. Abra is the first commercial base metals discovery in that, in that uh, basin. The key to finding Abra and unlocking its value has been geophysical analysis because in general, in this basin, all bodies don't have surface expression. There's not a lot of outcrop in this basin. The main geological feature is a fault system running east to west, known as the quartzite well fault system. Our ground in the basin is contiguous along that, that fault system. We are the experts in geology in this basin as well. 
and we have been conducting geophysical programs across our inter entire land holding and have a number of very exciting targets which are ABRA-like. So we believe uh, there's more than one ABRA in this basin and we believe it's highly likely to be on our ground and that over time, uh, with our knowledge, we're the likely uh, entity to find such additional mineralization. So I thank you for uh, your time in watching this brief presentation and I look forward to conducting meetings with people at the one-to-one -one conference APAC. Thank you very much.